In order to uh, bring the deficit down, we used a good deal of unconventional economic policy measures. Uh, we were the first country within the Euro uh, European Union introducing a bank levy. There were the crisis taxes, the formerly um, uh, mandatory pri private pension scheme, and so on and so on. However, however, we've got a convergence program now. Um, it was approved by the European Commission, and by definition, it means that our fiscal fiscal condition is in order. So it's over. The crisis is over. But you grew. But but your your economy contracted more than one percent Q on Q in the first quarter. It's the worst of the union. Of course, but uh, when you have a look at the last year's uh, last quarter's uh, GDP growth figure, it was one of the best within the European Union. So it is a transitionary period for the Hungary economy. We'll have, we'll have, may I just say, robust economic growth figure for next year. This year is a little bit risky. You are right. Everything I read is roundly criticizing the stewardship of the economy at the moment for the unconventional, uh, for all the things that you know. You know these criticisms. Why are they wrong, these people who are criticizing you? You are absolutely right, Richard. We are heavily criticized against the backdrop of um, um, a good deal of unconventional measures, but it is the future. We were forced to be innovative, creative. Too innovative, too creative. The economists say the economy is on the wrong track. To some extent, yes, but we managed to complete a successful fiscal consolidation scheme using, of course, you are right, uh, unconventional, even unorthodox measures. But the whole European economy will go for growth and jobs and creativity. It's badly needed to have creativity within the European Union. So when people say Hungary is headed for disaster, and the economy is headed for the rocks. You would say they are wrong and firmly wrong. Absolutely. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. The Hungarian fairy tale or the Hungarian example will be a successful one um, in, a, in, in, a, in a year time. Slow growth, high unemployment, a deficit that's being managed only by uh, smoke and mirrors at the moment, increased tax, a, a flat tax that's lowered the tax base, now, now, uh, all coins have two uh, sides. Uh, we've got a lowering, uh, decreasing public debt level. We've got a, bu a sustainable budget deficit level, well below 3% of the GDP. Uh, more new jobs in the economy. And, of course, a transition period for growth. But you are going to have to backtrack on the rules on the central bank. And the sooner you do it, the sooner everybody's going to get off your back. <laughs> right. Richard, the, the Hungarian uh, central bank is 100% uh, independent. Others don't agree with you, Minister. But, but, you know, by definition, they are independent from the government. Uh, and, and all the laws needed to make it absolutely sure for everybody will be in the parliament and, it, and all these laws will be approved by the end of June. I ask Minister, where do you see the strengths of the Hungarian economy within the European Union in the future? May I just say that uh, I see the strengths of the whole Central European region will be the next, will be the next hub uh, for the global business community, will replace the southern belt of the Eurozone. Uh, with the Central European region, it will be a very strong uh, uh, region because it will be um, a region between Europe and Asia, between uh, the States and, and the European Union. So it is the next emerging region called Central Europe and you can fight Hungary at the very heart of this region.